Salam. Afghanistan is known as one of the most dangerous places in the earth to be a woman and to be a politician. And I'm both. I was born as an unwanted child in a big traditional political family. My mother, who suffered a lot as a woman, didn't want to have yet another girl to suffer as much as she suffered as a woman. So when I was born, I was put out in the sun to die. But later on, she changed her mind. She held me and vowed that she will love and protect me through her life, a promise that she always kept. She always used to tell me that you will be something in the future. I never know what that something means, but I believed that my mother wish will one day come true and I will be something. I was three and a half years old when my father was killed. My father, who was a hardworking, dedicated member of parliament, representing one of the remotest and poorest area of my country, the same constituents that I represent today, Badakhshan province. My father was always busy in Kabul. He hardly could come to see us in our province. And when he came to see us, he was always busy with important visitors. The only time he spoke to me was when he told me to go away. When my father was killed, life became so difficult for us. Different rebel, rebel groups wanted to kill my brothers, my sisters, my mother. They wanted to loot our house, which they did so many times. So we had to flee the village. We had to leave the beautiful mountainous village behind and come to the city, Faisabad where the city was full of opportunities. One of those opportunities was for me to go to school. The first ever girl in our family to be allowed to go to school. Although my father established the first school in our village, but he never allowed his own daughters to go to school. So I went to school with the support of my mother, although my brothers were opposing it. But my mother, as my big supporter, convinced my brothers to allow me to go to school. Coming to the city, there was another thing that happened to me, and that was watching TV. By watching TV, I managed to see many world leaders on news, including the two female leaders, Margaret Thatcher and Indira Gandhi. Regardless of their political belief, but as a child who just opened her eyes and see the two women speaking in front of the men in the parliament, leading their nation, serving their country, the question always to my mind was, how could they do it? How could they stand in front of these men and speak? How could they lead their nation? All of those questions revolutionized my mind. And perhaps that was the time I started thinking with myself that I may go to politics once I grow up. When the Civil War began in 1992, that was the time when the whole international community turned their back to Afghanistan. There was no important embassies in Kabul. And that gave a chance, an opportunity for extremism and radicalism to grow. And that was the time that the Taliban started emerging. In those years, I lost my mother, the closest friend of my life, the biggest supporter, somebody that wanted, me, wanted to see me always as something big, I lost her. I thought that the sky has fallen in my shoulder and there is no sky. I could feel the heaviness 
of being lonely after I lost my biggest, biggest supporter. When the Taliban came, I was a medical student, something that my mother wanted always me to be a medical doctor. So I wanted her wish to come true. I went to medical college to be a doctor. But it really didn't last very long. When the Taliban came, like many other women and girls in Afghanistan, they stopped education opportunity for me. As you know, they stopped any kind of opportunity for women, including from going out to see a doctor, from going to the hospital, going to the school. So Afghan women started looking at the world and its beauty from the small window of their houses. As I had nothing else to do, I got married. <laughs> but just 10 days after our marriage, they arrested my husband and put him in jail. And his only crime was that he married me and I came from a political family. We still had henna in our hand when my husband was sent to jail. And the Taliban rule was for a woman to get out of her house, she was supposed to be accompanied by a male relative. So if my husband was in jail, how could I be accompanied by a male relative to go and see my husband? That difficult was the situation of women under Taliban. When my husband was freed from jail, that he was put in jail twice, we had to escape Kabul, the city that I really loved. I spent my childhood, I grew up to be a medical doctor. We escaped Kabul to go back to my constituents, my province, which was not controlled by Taliban. And I started there going, establishing a home-based school, teaching young boys and girls English. And because of the suffer, the discrimination, the injustice I felt, I see during Taliban, I started joining voluntarily to work for women's rights organization and later on eventually to UNICEF. In 2001, when the international community came to Afghanistan and the Taliban government was overthrown, we came back to Kabul. My family and I had to come back to Kabul. And for me, the important thing at that moment was I could go to the streets of Kabul and breathe without the fear of being beaten up by Taliban for the way of my clothes that they don't like it. That was the important point for me and many Afghans, that we were freed of the Taliban barbaric regime. So in 2005, the first ever democratically election was conducted in Afghanistan for parliament. We wanted to have a parliament that could represent the people's voice after 33 years of war. I decided to run for parliament. I decided to run firstly because the people demanded me, my constituents wanted me to run. Secondly, because of whatever I have seen as a child, as a woman, whatever trouble I have faced, in particularly during Taliban, I wanted to change that for other women. And third, I wanted to run because there was an opportunity for women. Women were allowed to go to politics. Women were allowed to become doctors, to become teachers, to go back to school. So I decided to run. But the challenge for me was to get elected freely, without a quota, in a general seat. We have a quota of 25%, according to our constitution, that women could represent in the parliament. And Afghan women are proud to be represented right now 27% in the parliament, I guess more than some of the European country and even the US. <laughs> so I ran and the challenge was to win a general seat. Why? Because I didn't want to always compete with the woman. I wanted to compete with the man and defeat them. And I won. 
I won a general seat. When we came to the parliament, there were leaders who had 30, 40 years of experience, of political experience, but you had all these women who just came to the parliament. They didn't know what to do. They only knew that they would represent their people's voice. So I decided to run in the bigger position, more senior position of the parliament, as the deputy speaker of parliament. I wanted to demonstrate that only to get elected to the parliament is not enough. Women need to demonstrate that they have abilities to go higher and higher and take bigger position and responsibility, and they will handle that responsibility. Many of my friends will tell me, yeah, you can run. It's okay, but you will not get elected because your opponents are big leaders. And I was the small leader or the small politician with no experience, no resources, nothing. My opponents will laugh. They will say, yeah, she will run, but so what? Every candidate who ran for this position, which was 11, again, leaders with 30 years of experience, they had to give a speech of 10 minutes, prepare a speech, perhaps by their advisors, research, etc. What I did was I just spoke. I talked honestly about my strength, my experiences, my vision for the country, my abilities. But I also talked about my weaknesses. What needs to be improved for women in Afghanistan, including myself? When I spoke so honestly, I received a clap of 10 minutes. We have a say in our language, in Dari, that if something comes from your heart, it will reach the heart of audiences. So because I spoke from my heart, people got that message. And to the surprise of everybody, I got elected. I was elected as the first woman deputy speaker of Afghan parliament in our history. I was chairing a parliament that people with different political background, people who used to fight against each other using weapons and guns, were sitting in that parliament. Now, using green or red cards to vote. Sometimes the same color of card. But again, that was not enough. For us women parliamentarian, there were many challenges of, ahead of us. We were supposed to change the life of other women in Afghanistan so that they don't suffer as much as we did. We were supposed to make sure that there are laws that protect women in Afghanistan from violence. We were supposed to make sure that women are represented in negotiation table and all government affairs. We were supposed to make sure that there is education for every child, including girls' child. That's why out of 8 million children now in Afghanistan, we have 40% girls' enrollment. We had to make sure that the budget in Afghanistan is gender sensitive, a very new concept for most of our ministers. And that was not easy. That is not easy for women. Women leaders in Afghanistan are always at risk of being killed, easy target for Taliban and insurgents. I personally receive many threats for my life, many security challenges. In fact, once I went to celebrate International Women's Day in one of the most conservative areas in south part of Afghanistan, with my sister, who is also a member of parliament, representing a different constituents, and my daughters. When we were coming back on the way in a mountainous area, Taliban started shooting in our cars and convoy. They wanted to kill me. As they started shooting, I thought that if I get any bullet in my head, I will immediately die. So I put my head under the seat and put my daughter's head also under the seat. For few seconds. Then I realized that the driver has lost control of the car. So I thought that I will not die for, because of car accident. Tomorrow, the news would be, Ms. Kufi passed away because of car accident. <laughs> I will die for a purpose, with a reason. So I stood up in my seat, 
and I started encouraging the driver to drive faster. We got home safe, but two of the security people got injured. So here is this little girl who was not wanted, who had to fight to go to school, who had to fight so hard to become a medical student, whose husband was put in jail just after her marriage, who had to fight to get elected, and then had to fight to get elected to senior position, had to fight for so many things, had to fight for women's rights, for law on, on protecting women from violence, for different things, standing in front of you now. This girl, who has a big dream, not only for her daughters, but also for other women and girls of this world. That's why whenever I leave the house, I'm not sure if I can come back safe in the evening. Therefore, I put farewell letters for my daughters. In those farewell letters, as a woman, as a mother, I, of course, advise them motherly, like, where is the key? Where is the money that I left for them? They should do their homework properly. They should continue their education. But I also put some important messages that I believe in, and it's the core of my struggle in politics. I write letters for them. And on, in, in those letter, letters, I tell them that I will willingly sacrifice my life if that means a peaceful, democratic Afghanistan, if that means a better future for them and other children of my country. Giving up is not with what we do. We fight, we survive, we live. Thank you.